Okay, guys, I've got my hone and drill set up here. And uh, if you notice, my stones are right at the top of the cylinder. And you want to hold it, kindly center it up. And you're going to break my stones can't really tell much about it like that because all the shavings so I want to spray it with some oil take my trusty grease rag sorry if it's a little shaky guys I'm just trying to I want you all to see this because I remember when I was a young man and I didn't know anything about cars or engines and there was no such thing as YouTube and I would have loved I had something like this to see. I had to learn it kind of, you know, my dad taught me some. Uh, he worked a lot. He didn't really have time. And my neighbor, as I said in another video, he had race cars and he taught me a lot. And then I actually went through a vocational training while I was in high school, competed in a competition and won it. Surprisingly, <laughs> I was a junior in high school and uh, I decided I wanted to be a mechanic, went through it all, and then found out that uh, I can make more money being a waterman. Better benefits. But it's good to know. You can see that cleans up pretty nice. And that's what I'm going to go with right there. And I've also cleaned these rod ends up with a piece of uh, Scotch Brown pad. And these rods are aluminum. I don't know that is I can't get a magnet to stick to it, but I can a piston. And that's odd because normally a piston is aluminum. So uh, when you when you mess with anything aluminum, do not use a wire brush. Do not use any kind of power tool to uh, clean it up. I use Scotch Brite pad and I done that lightly. Because what you're going to do is you're going to take away material. Uh, use sandpaper. Uh, 80 grit sandpaper is about as rough as I would get. Um, emery cloth. Scotch Brite pads. You know if you're cleaning up like a gasket material. Or a gasket facing. Like if this were aluminum. Um, take a little pocket knife or something. And get all the gaskets off there the best you can. And take 80 grit sandpaper to it. Uh, do not use a wire brush or nothing like that. They make little plastic brushes that you can put on like a die grinder and clean it up and the plastic will it does pretty good it's different grits uh, when I worked a uh, machine shop business we had them and they done all right but nothing worked as good as sandpaper 80 grit sandpaper is what we we kept a supply of it. So my next step is I'm going to try to clean everything up I've got my gaskets made in another video I showed how to do that so there's my gaskets it's my head gasket and then this is the gasket that mounts it to the block so I'm going to clean everything up and I'm going to get my assembly lube out and then I'm going to show you how I how I put it together so I'll be back Okay guys, I've got everything ready to start assembling this. You can see I've got my uh, cylinders, or cylinder, whatever you want to call it. I've got it in this uh, vise, and uh, I've got everything cleaned up. I see something I need to do. I need to uh, just smooth that up. Do that right quick. Okay. But, um, uh, I've got everything laid out here, and I've got all my directions marked. Uh, I've got a mark up here where my finger's at, all the way down, marking the front of the cylinder. I've got a mark on the side, right here, marking the, the outside of the compressor. The side where my numbers on my rods should go. Okay. I've got my, ring, my pistons cleaned up, or clean, you know. I've got them oiled up some, too. I got my rings in the positions they need to go. Now, when you're dealing with these rings, I'm reusing the old ones. 
I'm not buying new ones because I have no idea where I can get any. But the way I always done it, in a manual it'll tell you to like put one in on the left side, one on the right side. I just caddy corner them. This is going to be the, the middle of the side. You can see, let's, let's start here. This is the middle of the side, so I've got a gap here. I'm going to have a gap here. I don't know if you can see that for the light. And then this bottom oil ring, I've got it turned to the back. Just a little, you know, on the corner of it. So that's the way I'm going to do it. I've got my number one marked right here. That'll go to this side. Now what I'm going to do, I've not got a ring compressor, so I'm going to try to put these in here by hand, and that's just a little hard to do. But I'm going to oil these rings up. One of these old-fashioned oil cans. So I've got my piston going in here. Get my screwdriver. So I got my first one in. I don't want to break these. I want to be real careful. Something is not right here. Okay. Okay, guys, I got this little old ring compressor, and uh, I'm going to try that. See how that helps me? So I'm gonna to get this straight. What's a hat in here? Is my rod? will not fit down these cylinders. That means it comes out the bottom. Okay. There it goes. Okay. I'm gonna expand that. Number one's in. Okay. Notice my number one. Mark right here. You might not be able to notice that. Let's zoom in here. Okay. So I'm going to lay that over to the side. Got this piston. And I've got this ring compressor turned upside down because I'm putting it in upside down. I want my bands up next to the uh, where the ring's at. Drop my wrench. You can buy these in any parts store, Advance Auto, AutoZone, Pet Boys, your old parts houses. About 10 bucks, I think. Not bought one in probably 15 years. But it comes with a little wrench. You just tighten that up and get my finger out there. I'm going to lay it up like this. Because I don't want to drop this thing and break a ring or side of the piston or something like that. Now, as you're doing it, that's just it's squeezing together. I'm trying to do this as it's a squeezing together. I'm turning this. Uh, you want to make sure your ring is going in the grooves. You look right there, see that gap? I'm not going in there. But if not, what I would do. I just take something, I've got a little file, and just smack them bands. 